Okay, I'd like to get this meeting started. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for August 28th, 2013. Unless there are any changes to the agenda order, we'll just start at the beginning and work to the end. First item would be to review the September 3rd final agenda. That was easy. Meeting canceled. September 10th draft agenda. Anything to talk about on page one? Just a note of the 9 a.m. start time versus the 9.30. Closed session, 9 a.m.? Yes. I think that's what we're going to need. Anything else on page one? How about page two or three? Page four or five. Page six or seven. Note that we're going to take up the Council of Priority Policies Ordinances study session. Well, it's not really a study session. We'll deal with those, take action. So I'm not sure it should be called study session. It re really, we're going to make decisions. Mr. Mayor, would we yes. do that before the consent calendar? I think just following the consent calendar, because there's a lot of staff that come down for the consent calendar that can Fair just enough. move on after we've done that. And then question for staff. In 4.1, am I seeing in all that verbiage all the ordinances? Because it's such in a clear manner that's so legible. <coughs> that was a point of discussion at agenda review this morning. I believe uh, planning, building, code enforcement, and the attorney's office are taking a look at that agenda language. Is that one sentence? <laughs> no, it's actually two sentences because I checked. One yep. for the ordinance and one for CEQA. I think we're looking for AB or ABC. We're, we'll, we'll it would we'll be like a simplified list, and when would that be provided to the council? With the amended uh, agenda. Yeah. Actually, this will be deferred. Uh, it's noted on the bottom. If you could make it all the way to the bottom of that paragraph. Oh. So it will appear. It's on the next page. <laughs> Before the 17th. So I'm sorry. So just to be clear, then we are no longer doing the ordinances on September 10th. You want to move to September 17th? For 4.1, that's correct. And and 4.1 is the ordinance prioritization. No, that's 3.3. Uh, okay, so there's my question. So uh, on 3.3, then when will that list come out? We have a report in the works. We hope to make out with the packet this uh, at the end of this week. Okay, Friday. so then by Friday we'll see an, a clean list of items that are on the pending ordinances, yes, and policies. Okay, thank you. I've had to make a motion to approve the agenda, moving three point three. Well, three point three is already. Yeah, a few more pages. Let me just go through. Okay. <laughs> okay. So any, anything else on page? Let's pay, I one on mine or page six and seven, or eight and nine. Talk about. Uh, that was the rest of the agenda. Then we have uh, one successor agency item. Anything else, Pete? Just, uh, quick, Mayor, on uh, 5.1, I, I forget what the rules are. A couple of us are members of the Rotary Club. Do we just note that at it, the time? It's disclosure at the time. Okay, great. But it's not disqualification. That's for okay. the children's playground, item 5.1. So on, on that note, Mr. Mayor, if we could, uh, we since we are accepting a substantial gift and the um, uh, uh, city would like to recognize a number of community partners there, there will be a number of people in attendance, uh, but suitable for a time certain, just want to call that to your attention. Well, we'll ordinarily, we would just move it up so that we take it early, but we've got the ordinance priorities to be set early. So if we said we'll do that at 3 o'clock, not before 3. I think that would be yeah. appreciated. Fine. And then uh, we'll we can take it up ahead of agenda order to try to get it as close to 3 as possible. I mean, I how much are they proposing to give us? 4.5, I believe. So four four and a half million dollars. It should get like moved up on the agenda <laughs> two spots. At least. At Fair least. enough. <laughs> So now before three for item 5.1. Anything else on the items including the successor agency reimbursement agreement item? I have some requests for additions. Councilmember choose travel to Sacramento for League of Cities. 
Councilmember Constance Travel for Governing Magazine, Councilmember Constance Travel for National League of Cities. Any other requests for additions? Motion to approve the agenda with the additions and the edits. Second. Right, motion is to approve with the changes. Any requests to speak? I have none on that. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed? That's done. We have an upcoming study session agenda, September 3rd. Anything to talk about on the agenda order or such things? Mr. Mayor, uh, the co committee has reviewed this previously, so if there are no other feedback, we're ready to go. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. I would note that the staff report on this is out uh, as of this morning. We have a motion to approve on a on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. Legislative update. We have nothing to talk about at the moment. Waiting for the governor to sign a bunch of bills or not. Nothing under meeting Actually, schedules. I had a, I had a question under we? meeting schedules. Meeting schedules. The, uh, I, I was speaking with uh, Ed a little bit earlier. We have a, still a few reservations for study sessions um, for the rest of the year. Do we know? how many topics we have versus study sessions and um, just kind of looking forward. For the remainder of the calendar year, we have, uh, let's see, beyond the revenue measures that's scheduled for the 3rd of September, we have five more scheduled, one of which is for the joint city county uh, meeting tentatively scheduled for October 18th and nearer term on September 26th, uh, urban villages plan as a tentative item. So we've got, uh, again, a total of five beyond the one planned for next week. So that's five dates? Five dates. Five dates, two topics so Correct. far. At this point. Okay. So I had just expressed a concern about the date with the village plan, and I've been talking with the um, city manager's office about that because I think it's an important one to make sure that we have all the council here for that. And uh, so I'll, I'll deal with them offline a little bit more in that area. Okay. If, if well, necessary, we could always, again, look for a regular council date that might uh, uh, be more suitable. So. Okay. Anything we else? just make a move to move it to another date? Yeah. I think we just need to poll the council because, you know, what might be good for one may be completely wrong for the other. So just my intent is just to make sure that because it is a very important policy decision and we have... Uh, stuff in every one of the districts in some districts like mine and some others have projects that are almost ready to go I think we really have to have an involved discussion about it well we do have to have an involved uh, discussion but it is a study session right. action would not be taken until some right. later council agenda it's been on the agenda for a while so hopefully council members have somewhat protected it but we often don't get everybody uh, for, for some of those meetings and the question is if we don't do it then when do we do it and how does it fit in because there are other study session ideas that have, we're, right. we're waiting for dates as, as well. So, so you, you'll just continue to uh, yeah. discussion. Yeah. All right. Nothing else on meeting schedule from the public record. I have a couple requests to speak on the public record. Martha O'Connell. Martha O'Connell from the Senior Commission, reference uh, letter A. Just a quick thank you, unless I've been misinformed, I, I believe the council has taken a proposition on AB 1229. Uh, one of the jobs of the senior commission is not just to tell you what we make a recommendation to you, but also to commend you when you've, when you've taken a position with which we agree. And housing is a critical element for seniors in this city. So thank you very much for your continued support of this bill. Richard McCoy. Richard McCoy, uh, Senior Commission. Um, I'd like to echo a lot of things my colleague said there, Martha, in regards to uh, AB uh, 1229. I think it's a uh, endorsement of that is a, a good uh, way for the seniors to get more housing, and that's very important to them because on fixed income, with the rates going up, especially here in this valley, affordable housing is something they need, along with all the other treatment and the benefits that they get in seniors. So please, uh, thank you for any endorsement you want to give to 1229. Thank you. Marie Hader. I too want to thank you for your 
endorsement of AB 1229. And I wanted to add a little bit to it from my work, not as a commissioner today, but as a SPA volunteer. SPA, SPA, is the Senior Peer Advocate Program, partially funded by the city. And it's to guide the seniors through the maze of governmental availability. The gerontologists are busy with administrative details these days, and so the people who are being trained for this Senior Peer Advocate Program are to help them find food, and legal help and housing. We do not provide it, but we help them find the people who provide it. And what I want to say today is that when it comes to housing, we have no open resources. Nothing that we can tell the seniors who are living in a car where they might go to get on a waiting list. Even the waiting lists are closed. So I want to thank you for anything you can do to help require affordable housing be included when the developers are making new houses for us. That concludes the public testimony on the public record. Anything the committee would like to pull? Motion to note and file. Second. We have a motion to note and file the public record. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. That's approved. We have nothing under the uh, Boards, Commissions, Committees, Work Plans, and Appointments category, so we'll move to category G. First item is two. There's a report on the airport curfew and noise abatement program improvements, reporting back from a previous uh, council referral. I have one request to speak, Chris Escher. Mr. Escher, tilt that up just a little bit and it'll pick up your voice a little better. There you go. Nice to be so tall. <laughs> I'm here representing the Shasta Hanshaw Park Neighborhood Association Board and I'm reading a message from the board. Today we're asking the committee's leadership in setting up a new process to help the airport and neighborhoods, neighborhoods work together on curfew and other airport issues more effectively. It's called the San Jose Airport Neighborhoods Oversight Committee. Here's our thinking. Council's decision to expand private jet operations at the airport earlier this year marked an important turning point for the airport's potential fortunes as well as potential impacts on the surrounding neighborhoods, impacts beyond the curfew. Simply put, our new airport will require a new system to ensure that neighbors understand what's going on at the airport and for staff to understand what's going on in the neighborhoods. We believe that the Caltrain Equipment Maintenance Operations Facility, CMOF, their oversight committee is a good model for us to consider. I've been on the CMOF oversight board for many years. It offers a clear, systemic, cordial, and efficient way for neighborhoods in Caltrain to successfully address nuisance issues occurring at the site. While Caltrain and the airport, of course, are different, we believe that an ongoing structure such as this could help organize community input more effectively, disseminate airport communications more effectively, and lead towards innovative and smart cooperative problem solving our airport needn't make the decision between being successful and being a good neighbor. It can be both. We believe this sort of cooperative oversight committee can go a long way toward creating common ground and shared solutions, beginning but not limited to the curfew. We're asking the committee and the council to begin the process of creating this oversight committee, and the Shasta Hanshaw Board is happy to work with you in any way you deem fit. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all of us to speak on this item. The staff report contemplates a further report, a preliminary report on one of the council referrals, which was assessing the possibility of increasing the fines for non-compliant operations during curfew hours. Staff is saying they expect a report not later than mid-October and maybe sooner. Uh, when that comes back, I think it should come back through the Airport Competitiveness Committee. Uh, it is an interesting question. Could be a source of revenue. Uh, it could be a source of uh, problems for the airlines. Who knows? Uh, but I think it would be a, a way to, to get that vetted in a, another public hearing before it, it comes back uh, and then to us, and then we can get it on the council agenda at the appropriate time. That's what I'd like to do. Uh, motion to do just that, Mayor, and have that uh, go to the Competitors Committee and then come to the Rules Committee. Second. Okay. We have a motion to refer that to staff and bring it back. Through the committee. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? That's what we'll do. 
Item G3 is the Vietnamese New Year flag raising ceremony. Motion approved. Second. Second. Uh, let me add to that the Mid Autumn Festival and Resource Fair. There's another special event, two special events. Yep. Motion approved as well. Yep. Motion is to approve both as special events. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? Those are approved. So that leaves us with item G4. Approve a proposed ordinance banning purchase, use, distribution, and sale of all sugar, sweetened beverages, and sodas, the city of San Jose, et cetera. We have a memorandum from Councilmember Calra, who's here. I presume he wants to speak on his uh, memo. Let's do that first. Councilmember Calra. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and you know, just appreciate gotten more attention, I think, frankly, um, than I deserved at this point, given what is being asked. Uh, first of all, what's being asked that it be placed on the priority setting session. No one's being asked to support or not support. I'm not asking uh, staff time to put on it. It's just the we're, I'm trying to go through the proper process of getting something to be considered by council. And of course, the priority setting, you know, as we've gone through now a number of times, uh, Mayor, you and the council then we vote and, and choose what we feel out of the, the list, the comprehensive list, what are the top priorities. That being said, I, I just want to clear up. Um, some misinformation that's been put out in the media and some of it by the media itself, I think just because they, uh, there was some confusion as to what was uh, uh, being proposed. Uh, this is not a ban on soda in the city of San Jose. <laughs> Make that very clear. <laughs> uh, it's also not a tax. It's not a Bloomberg telling you how large of a drink you can drink. Um, the proposal uh, as further elaborated upon in the background uh, is a proposal to look at what we offer at some of our city facilities. And I say some because although the subject says all city facilities, as mentioned in the background, it very clearly states that there's an understanding that there will be exemptions uh, which would come through the process. And certainly a very specific exemption mentioned is uh, buildings, facilities that serve commercial purposes and specifically mentions SAP Pavilion, Dolce Hayes Mansion, and all, I can name the airport and many others uh, that would be included under that umbrella. So really we're talking about community centers, libraries and such, but again, those are details uh, that I think although are important would, uh, would, would come out of further discussion. Also uh, in the background is um, reference to a, a, a variety of um, different uh, first data, but also some of the, uh, some more detail as to what is uh, being proposed at least at this time. And, um, again, one of the uh, one of the issues is, or, or one of the uh, items would be um, to look at not only where but what would be uh, considered under the proposal. Now, this idea is not a novel idea. In fact, the, the county of Santa Clara, and I believe we have a couple of representatives, Bonnie Broderick and Susan um, Carlin, that are here. Uh, they uh, similar proposal actually went into effect at a number of county buildings last year. The state of California passed a similar proposal in 2005 that was implemented in 2009 at all California schools. And uh, so this is not necessarily a novel idea. And another, uh, and as, as you read the actual background of the memorandum, uh, it, it's clear uh, that the intention is what the city offers and this does not limit um, what um, someone has in their picnic basket or what a sports team offers uh, if they're playing in a sports league if they want to drink Gatorade, as uh, has been implied by Councilman Constant. That's not the case, and in reading the background uh, and, and the parallels to the county policy, uh, it's clear the, the concern is simply what the city has to offer. Now, um, a couple of other issues is on the uh, actual items being proposed. Again, this is a proposal, and Never have I seen anything that's gone to the priority setting session where the first draft looks like the final draft. And so um, everything is up for discussion in terms of what the proposal would, would look like. And again, none of this happens unless the council decides this is a priority to begin with, which we're far from even getting to that point. Um, there, there's uh, been reference or concern about milk being on the list, and Councilor Constant has been happy to milk that issue. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, again, that list was uh, emulates the, the county and, and state list rather than having our staff do a pre-analysis. Uh, I, I uh, took the liberty of doing using a list that's gone through extensive analysis through the state 
and county level. So at least we have some example of what uh, these types of proposals typically consider. It doesn't mean that any one of them would be on a uh, final list. And, and uh, you know, I, I think that finally, there have been a number of items, like a lot of items come before us, a lot of important issues that we all take very seriously. Paramount, of course, is public safety, and, and no one I think that's been paying attention can say that I haven't at least been vocal uh, on my concern and advocacy for public safety, whether we agree on how we get there or not. Um, you know, that's something that's been very important to me as for advocating for library hours and for uh, p pedestrian traffic safety and you name it. So it, it's not a matter of this being a higher priority. This is going through the proper process by which we determine if something is a priority uh, in comparison and in a relation to other items that are on the list. I will say, however, that in addition to advocating for critical needs like public safety, um, and general city operations and fire safety and libraries. There have been a number of public, si uh, of public health and environmental ma manners, matters that have gone through this council successfully. That includes the, the secondhand smoking ordinance that I was happy to push forward and it was strengthened by banning smoking and outdoor dining. Uh, it, and it includes the work we're doing right now on mobile fruit and vegetable carts in our neighborhoods. Does that mean we stop uh, by doing that, does that mean we're, we're not looking at public safety? We're not concerned about burglaries and, uh, and what have you? Of course not. Um, everyone can, you know, can decide whether this is a priority or not, but we, we all can agree that public safety and, and those issues are of utmost importance will always be a priority. We don't need to have priority setting sessions to decide that. They're always going to be a priority. This is just one item I'm bringing forward for the public health so that San Jose can model good behavior, can offer healthy offerings. There's thousands of outlets that offer soda and milk and what have you uh, to the residents. And um, uh, frankly, the, the, the amount of time and attention this has received so far, uh, I think, um, I understand it's an effort so that they're, they're, it doesn't go any further, and I, I respect that. But the reality is that even if it were set on priority setting, uh, there's still uh, it's no staff time uh, dedicated until and at which time there's a majority of the council that feels this should go forward. And the, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm just trying to go through the right and proper process rather than just bringing this up during the priority setting session, which oftentimes happens. I, I'm bringing this up in advance through the Rules Committee to have a place there is one of many items to be considered. Thank you. Well, to, to put it very shortly, I, I'm not going to put this on my top 10 list. It's an idea whose time has not yet come it went relative to all the other things that I think we ought to have our staff working on. Uh, so uh, as we go through whatever priority setting session uh, we have, uh, this definitely will not make my, my top 10 list. Councilmember Constant. Thank you, Mayor. I think we could probably debate whether I belt this or not, but I think it's clear that I haven't drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> and um, you know, as we look at this, I, I know there's an effort to do a little bit of uh, backpedaling and, and stepping away from some of this, but I think it's really clear um, in the subject line in all capital letters that this is proposing banning the use of these items and the distribution of these items. And um, you can go into the background all you want, but it's pretty clear that the intent from the title is banning purchase, use, distribution, and sale of all sweetened beverages. Now, everyone here knows I'm not a fan of bans, and I, I don't think I've supported any of the bans we've had here at City Hall, and, and that's more of a philosophical thing. But, you know, obesity is a problem. I know it. You guys know me. I struggle with it. You've seen me here fat. You've seen me here skinny. You've seen me here everywhere in between. Uh, obesity is a complex issue. Um, but this is a real simple-minded approach to addressing it. We have partnerships with our county. We have partnerships with our school districts to educate and inform people. Our Happy Hollow Zoo does a great job of that. And that's what this city should be doing in relation to this. You know, I don't know how much anyone has noticed, but I don't drink very many sodas. I'd say it's a heavy month if I have two in a month. I don't drink whole milk. I don't add sugar to anything. I don't even have Fruit Loops in the morning, uh, believe it or not. So, you know, it's to say that there is a direct correlation and causation 
um, I think is flawed. But when you go into the detail of this memorandum, um, it's pretty clear, again, in the, in the stating, these are the beverages that will be banned, these are the beverages that will be exempt. Many of you know I'm also a fan of props, so I brought some props today. <laughs> oh, it's in contraband too, sorry. I have it in a plastic bag, but <laughs> this item is a low-fat chocolate milk that is clearly specified that it would be exempt. This is an item, whole milk, that is clearly specified would be banned. What's interesting is there's almost three times the amount of sugar in this item than this item. Something I do drink on a regular basis, orange juice, 100% pure fruit juice. Shockingly, it has almost three times the amount of sugar of whole milk. And I could go on and on with all of these different exemptions, but this is a very specific policy that's been proposed. And, you know, as somebody who has enforced the law a number of times, I know what the words use and distribution mean. And contrary to what you just said, council member, if we had our soccer fields completed, which they're on their way to be, or our softball fields completed, um, and we had organized sports, and there was a sponsor that was providing a sports drink, like a Gatorade, and they distributed that to the players after playing several hours in the heat, that would violate what is clearly put in here in capital letters in the subject of this memorandum. Use is pretty clear. If I open this up and drink it, I'm using it. So if you're in one spot, as we backpedal, we talk about city facilities, but again, when you read the exact description in capital letters on this memorandum, it talks about city-owned properties. We own sidewalks, we own parks. We talk about city events. So I could take my kids to the jazz festival, I could have a beer, but my wife couldn't have a soda. Does that make any sense at all? You can't even have a Diet Coke. Diet Cokes are banned. I think that's a new one. I think that does break new ground. I haven't read the county's policy, but I have read some of the school district's policies. They don't ban the use of. A kid can take home milk in their lunch or a soda in their lunch, or they can have it when the little leagues play on the weekends or whatever the case. This is an overreaching thing. I think that we should continue to work with our health department, our Happy Hollow Zoo, our school districts, and we should educate. I would much rather educate than legislate. I'd much rather educate than regulate because these are complex issues. And while we, sodas are the fad now, we all know about Mayor Bloomberg, and he's already been mentioned a couple times. Um, that's a fad, it's a topic, let's jump on the bandwagon, let's do something with sodas. But I think it's ironic that you can go out to breakfast in the morning and have a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich on a butter croissant, but you can't wash it down with whole milk if you look at a policy like this. Red meat contributes to heart disease. Do we ban that next? There are a lot of contributing factors in a lot of these areas. But when it comes down to it, a person like me who's struggling with obesity and looking for how they're going to address it should be working with their doctor and making decisions for themselves on what they want to do with their health. I believe that people should have that choice. I also believe that government's role is not to censor options for people. You know, basically we're censoring a menu and I don't believe that is our role. And I'll tell you as a father of five, my pediatrician told them whole milk, told me whole milk is what they should get. And I don't think if I'm in a city facility, the city should tell me that's not an option if I have my children with me. We have a coffee cart, uh, probably what, 300 feet from here, that sells whole milk lattes. Now, I see people who buy non-fat lattes and put 10 bags of sugar in it. <laughs> so, you know, it's not as simple as this memorandum makes it seem. To make a blacklist and a whitelist a good and bad, I think is bad public policy. 
to ban the use and distribution of something that quite frankly can be very healthy for you or won't kill you if you do it in moderation, I don't think is right. I mentioned many times that I've got kids, I got five, they don't drink sodas, they do drink whole milk. But once in a while, I'll let them have a soda and that's okay because I'm their parent and I have the right to make that decision. And it shouldn't matter whether I'm sitting at our park, our zoo, the jazz festival, a farmer's market, or here in City Hall as they come up to visit me. And I just think this is the wrong thing for us. I think it is a big overreach. And again, let's simply educate, not legislate. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, well, I think we can all see what this is going and it's probably going nowhere. Um, uh, you, you know, I, uh, I don't think that this is going to make on any of my list, whether it's the top 10 or the top 100. I, I don't want to see something like this. I, I completely agree with uh, Councilmember Constant. Wait, can you say that again? Yes, I agree with <laughs> Councilmember Constant just on this issue. Um, <laughs> For this limited purpose. E exactly. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate Councilmember Carras. Uh, he has a definitely a deep concern uh, for the general health of the public uh, with his previous initiatives. But I think this is uh, stretching a bit much. Um, the city of San Jose is participating in a national campaign called Let's Move. And I think that we're doing a really good job with that in terms of trying to curb obesity uh, among children uh, in our city. We also have the Get Fit, Be Strong, Eat Healthy Obesity Prevention Initiative um, that actually staff comes to the Neighborhood Services and Education Committee, which I chair uh, on a monthly basis to give an update in terms of what the city is trying to do uh, in regards to that. But at, at the end of the day, um, really, the most sensible thing to do if you wanted to have a healthy lifestyle is to eat in moderation and to exercise on a regular basis. It sounds mundane and it's redundant, but it's just common sense. And I think that if you do that, uh, whether it doesn't matter how old you are or what gender, um, you're going to be healthy. And, and that's what we ought to go out there and tell the public. That's what we ought to do for ourselves. And so, um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to beat this horse <laughs> to death. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, and I'm sure Councilmember Oliver would probably have something to chime in. I have absolutely nothing to say. Very good. Ma Mayor, um, if I could just do one clarification again, uh, I'm, I have the, the subject line is in regards to actions by the city. If there's any confusion, I'm clearing it up right now, that there was never an intention, that's why it's not mentioned in the background, of use or distribution by private citizens on, at picnics, at Little League games, and all that. So, or, you know, or, or um, uh, again, I just want to make it very clear that it's, this is not meant to limit private activity in that nature. And so that's why um, yes, it may say the words use distribution, and you know very well, Pete, that uh, as items are put forward, they're clarified, and that's for the clarification. There's no backpedaling because it was never, ever, uh, uh, there was never a thought in my mind of limiting what someone can have in their picnic basket or what they can give their little league team. And so that's why uh, I just want to make that very clear. And so if there's confusion, I hope that confusion is gone now, and um, it, it's not meant to limit that kind of activity. But what you want to do is limit the choices. What I want to do is, uh, what I'm looking at is what the county has done is looking at just certain city facilities and what the city of San Jose offers to residents. It doesn't limit what thousands of purveyors offer the community or what folks bring in their own purse or their own bag. They can bring whatever they want as long as they're allowed to drink it. You know, the library said you don't bring, it, bring anything in a bottle to drink, that's fine, you can't. But other than that, uh, it doesn't limit anything that individuals can do. Well, except for limit choice. Well, no, the, the city, just like any other organization, just like any company, we have every right to decide what it is we choose to sell or not sell. If someone comes and says, I want a Pepsi, or we only have a Coke, well, they don't have a right to have a Pepsi there. We have every opportunity and every right to decide what it is that we do sell. And so it's just simply a matter of, uh, of what we're offering at certain facilities. Mayor, may I suggest we hear from the public? Okay. I have some people who want to speak. Uh, we have a lot of people who want to speak, and uh, I don't want to run out of time before we need to move on because we have other things to do. So I'm going to limit the public testimony to one minute. It's a pretty simple question at this point. Uh, please uh, step forward when I call your name, Martha O'Connell. Pete, it's only disguising the other side of the aisle that can create 
Uh, comment number two, I don't care what you eat for breakfast, and I don't care what he eats for breakfast. I just don't, I want you to just leave me alone and let me make my own choices. I talked to some seniors yesterday, and it sounds like a joke, but it's serious. They said, would you tell those buffoons, I'm sorry that's what they said, that we're about, r we're getting ready to die anyway, and just let us have our Cokes <laughs> at the senior centers? So don't do this. It's, it's ridiculous, and it's not what America is all about. It's limiting choices. Tim Albrecht. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Tim Albrecht. I'm uh, the distribution center manager for Coca-Cola here in the San Jose area. And uh, there was just a couple points that I wanted to talk about. I'm Sierra representing uh, 193 employees, 113 Teamsters. Um, and I can't even begin to account uh, all the customers and employees that they have as well. We we're very concerned when we saw that and have been very active with the city council. And I, I thank the vice mayor and, and uh, Mayor Constant as, in regards to talking to me um, about this because my employees are concerned. The proposed ordinance states the city should take responsibility for providing healthy options that do not contribute to Obesity, the obesity academic. Instead of providing options and educating the public about proper nutrition choices, this ordinance only restricts choices for all consumers. All we want, we're sitting here uh, in this great city and we should have choices. We shouldn't be deciding what people are consuming. Um, obesity is a very complex problem. Vice Mayor talked about it. So I'm here representing, if they were all standing here, 200 people, then you can add all Sorry, the customers your time as is well. Up. Thank you very much. Kevin Cotilla. First of all, first, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me to speak. Now, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I want to address Mr. Culver and let him know that actually, if you take a look at, the, at, at what the line says, it says purchase or use, use or distribution. Whatever you say, it means I can't. If I go to the jazz festival or something, I can't drink a Coke. I can't drink a Diet Coke. And I happen to resent that because I happen to be a person that drinks the Diet Cokes a lot. And I, and I want you to know that Mr. I- Mr. Cotilla, this committee is going to make a decision today, so you probably I, should address I am asking us. You, I am asking this, count, this, this board to not put this on the ballot because it is not something that this city should should concern themselves okay. with. Your time and is up. I happen to agree with um, Your Mayor time Con is up. The, 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 Mr. Con Chris Brecker. Let me just clarify, Chuck's the mayor, not me. <laughs> My name's Chris Brecker. It's Chris, if you squeeze the handle, the whole thing will slide. Oh, there, there you go. go. Okay. Uh, I'm here also to speak against uh, um, the uh, ordinance or rule change. Uh, and I'm one of the, uh, the little guys that actually fills the machines. So small business operator, my wife and I uh, co-own a small vending company, and we're the ones that this is gonna immediately impact. Um, you're gonna take away 80% of the choices that we have in terms of product to put in the machine, and that's gonna affect our ability to run and operate our company. So even as, d as defined as you've re revised it, that's still going to hurt my business and, and hurt my ability to pay my bills, pay my mortgage, uh, which is already too high. Uh, but so thank you. Jim Reed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name's Jim Reed with the San Jose Silicon Valley Chamber of Commerce, and I've got copies of a letter here I can, uh, I can leave with staff if you're interested. And first of all, we appreciate uh, Council Member Calra's uh, initiative on this, uh, on this issue. We appreciate the leadership that the San Jose City Council has already shown in some of their initiatives to increase education among citizens in the entire Silicon Valley about making healthy choices. Um, we tend to think, as a matter of philosophy, that Solutions to complex problems rarely involve limiting consumer choice in the marketplace. Um, education is, uh, is clearly needed, on, especially in a case like this where I think Councilmember Calra would agree, uh, 
sweetened beverages are part of the problem. Maybe they're even only a, a relatively small part of the problem compared to fast food and other things where, uh, once again, the answer, we think, uh, is education and increased awareness. So especially when we're dealing with industries that are have products that are legal, that families depend on for their livelihood, we need to, uh, to be very cognizant before we take any step which would uh, limit consumer choices. Up. Thank you very much. Jim Fleischman. Thank you. As a 20-year bending office coffee industry veteran, I've seen a wide spectrum of health initiatives and, and initiatives to ban different products. I'll just give you two quick anecdotes. 20 years ago, I was approached to bring bottled water into vending. Can't sell bottled water in vending. 20 years later, the number one selling beverage in a vending machine, bottled water. Also was approached to bring in healthy items. By what guidelines is healthy? It cannot have trans fat. Brought in red vines, sold a ton of red vines. How healthy are red vines? The, the point being is the market has dictated to us in the vending industry, we want healthy items. And the crux of the matter is, you vote with your dollar in front of that machine. If you want a healthy item, you make that choice. And there we go, choice. And that's all I'm saying. Let the people have their choice. Thank you. Hugo Loyola. Uh, my name is uh, Hugo Loyola, and I work for Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. Singling out soda ignores the bigger issues and fails to offer an effective solution to obesity. The beverage industry is committed to educating consumers and doing our part to address obesity. We are responding to consumer interest in fewer calories and more choices by developing more lower calorie and smaller portion products. The proposed ordinance states that the city should take responsibility for providing healthy options that do not contribute to, to the obesity epidemic instead of providing options and educating the public about proper nutrition choices. This ordinance only restricts choice for all consumers, including adults. We encourage you to reject this proposed ordinance. And just to throw it out there, um, our company is also building up playgrounds in the Bay Area next month. Thank you, Monica Rodriguez. Rodriguez, I represent in Canteen. Um, we actually cater to a large um, clients and consumers in the Silicon Valley, um, which we also listen to their needs and their wants. And also we feel that by banning sugar and uh, sweetened beverages, excuse me, will cause not only a trickle effect by decreasing the revenue in the, for the county and the city, but eventually loss of jobs. So we do feel that educating and um, and not limiting choices are a better choice. Dave Truslow. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Dave Truslow, and I'm here to urge support of the ban on sweetened beverages and congratulate uh, Mr. Kalra for his leadership. For far too long, the People's Republic of Berkeley has held the crown as the nation's laughing stock. It's time for San Jose to have that honor with his help. We very much appreciate it. <laughs> and by all means, uh, consider this measure that has absolutely no scientific backing. There's absolutely no evidence that it works. In fact, there's evidence it doesn't work. Bans have been tried. It doesn't work. If it did, then maybe we could make some tough choices, but it doesn't work. There's no data. And by the way, as far as the county is concerned, I often have lunch with my friends in the basement of the county building, and guess what they serve down there? Milk sugar beverages, you name it. So maybe they've written something, but they certainly aren't walking the talk. <laughs> so again, I uh, richly I d appreciate the, uh, the um, uh, proposal, and I think it will certainly put San Jose on the map. Thank you. <laughs> Dan McClure. So congratulations. I'm the first one that's actually for this ordinance. 40 years ago, uh, they... they um, they started this thing called education around cigarettes, and they realized that education wasn't enough. So what they started doing was they started instituting policies and procedures and taxing things, and guess what? 40 years ago, 
40% uh, uh, of the California adult population were smoking cigarettes. Today it's down to 10%. We know that there is direct evidence that links obesity with sugar sweetened beverages. This is why you're concerned about it. There's so much scientific evidence, and I know my colleagues are going to talk about this evidence, that you should be aware of. Uh, you can hold a Coke in one hand and a cigarette in the other hand, and you're, you're going to increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. Those, those sugar sweetened beverages that you have right in front of you are, are loaded with sugar. And I, like, your, like you, I don't give these things to my kids, but I also want to make sure that the healthy choice is the easy choice. So as my kids are navigating city properties or their schools or our faith-based community, we want to make sure that uh, we're that, that healthy choice Sorry, is your, the easy your choice. Time Thank is you. up. Susan Carlins. I'm speaking from BANPAC, the Bay Area Nutrition and Physical Activity Collaborative located here on Parkmore in San Jose. And um, I don't have time to get into all my evidence, but I do want to say that compared to non-drinkers, individuals who drink one to two sugar-sweetened beverages per day have a 26% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So I guess I would say I'm speaking on behalf of families who don't want their children to develop diabetes. Uh, so reducing consumption of sodas and other sugary drinks could potentially improve the health of thousands of San Jose residents. At BANPAC since 2011, we've worked with uh, over 41 cities and community organizations to pass and implement 100% healthy beverage policies much stricter than the one proposed here today. Um, and the cities that have passed these 100% policies include Mountain View, Belmont, Burlingame, Daly City, South San Francisco. Organizations here in San Jose with a similar policy include Asian Americans for Community Involvement, Aki, the YMCA of Silicon Valley, Marantha Christian Sorry, Center. Sorry, your time is up. The Community Health Partnership of Santa Your time County. is up. Bonnie Broderick is our next speaker. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Bonnie Broderick from the Public Health Department, and I'm here today to share some data and evidence for you as you move forward in deciding your priorities. Um, in Santa Clara County, as you know, 55% of the adults, a quarter of the youth, and nearly a third of all children are overweight and obese. That's a problem. It's a problem for you guys to deal with. It's a problem for us to deal with. There's a growing body of evidence um, and activities around the state and nation related to beverages and health. Research does demonstrate that sugar-sweetened beverages are among the largest contributions to chronic disease epidemic. These beverages account for 43% of the increase in daily calories consumed between 1977 and 2001 and continues to be the largest source of added sugars in the American diet. That's a fact. There's data. We have research. Public health policy is an effective strategy to create healthy environments. And as you know, it's a lot of communities are moving forward to create healthy environments so individuals can make healthy choices. We support making healthy choices. We support having people having an option of what they're going to consume and help. Sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Javier Gonzalez. Good, ap good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the Rules Committee. I'm Javier Gonzalez, Director of Government Affairs for the California Restaurant Association. Uh, we're here to oppose the uh, proposed um, ordinance or issue uh, brought before you by Councilman Kalra. Uh, this uh, proposed ordinance may potentially affect food service providers that may be considering providing services at city-owned facilities um, or from uh, donating um, foods or beverages to uh, groups that are out of community centers or libraries as donations for activities or events. The restaurant industry has been resp uh, responsive to issues of childhood obesity. Many owners and operators have expanded their uh, menu options to include more healthy options. At the end of the day, the issue of childhood obesity should have a comprehensive approach that incorporates nutritional education and awareness, exercise, and diet. We urge the Rules Committee now to move forward with this issue. Thank you. Kim Wickerstrom. Thank you for your time. I am a mother of six. I don't drink sodas, but I defy anyone to take away my choice to do so. I believe that it is my responsibility to teach my children to make good choices. I don't believe legislation 
that takes away my opportunities and my choices are the purview of this council. May I suggest, in all respect, that there are so many more important things that need to be discussed. Uh, the pension reform, that's a huge one. How about hiring more policemen? How about balancing the city budget? There is so much more that we need to do <laughs> without taking away the choices of us people here in San Jose. We are fully capable of making our own decisions. Thank you. Daniel Orozco. Thank you, my name is Daniel Orozco, and um, I wanna thank the lady who just came up for her words. If those of you on this rules committee and out here don't believe that there really is an effort to uh, impose certain things on our lives and limit our choice, I uh, have something to show everybody. This may look like a little post-it note here to you, but yesterday, my wife, who works for another local government agency, brought me a piece of cake from a party that they had. This is the size that they are allowed to cut and serve their employees. So this is what we're looking uh, towards in our future if we don't stop these sorts of efforts now. Thank you. Richard McCoy. Good afternoon again. And uh, Councilman uh, Connor, I appreciate your efforts in this, but this item has gotten more publicity than some of the more important things the city's facing, like crime, uh, graffiti, uh, road repairs, uh, libraries open. Let's devote our attention to those more important things and let the adults decide what they want to do. And I myself, I'll have to admit, when I was younger, I drank two or three Cokes a day and was at a nice weight. The difference between then and now is my lifestyle has changed and I don't get as much exercise. But like my doctor tells me, a fat, juicy hamburger once a day will kill you. A fat, juicy hamburger once a month will make you feel good. And as adults, we can decide for ourselves. <laughs> That concludes the public testimony on this item, Councilmember Constant. Thank you, Mayor. So I just want to say that I agree with something that one of the folks from the County Health Department said, and that is we should increase choices. I don't think we should restrict them. So I'm totally fine with adding extra options that people can choose from and let them choose from left to right or anywhere in between for what they want to have. And I think that's what we should be doing. And I'll tell you, education does work. My kids go to public school. They participate in a number of different educational programs, including one, I think it's called 54321, and my son recites it all the time. And he actually looks at these labels. He's in fifth grade, he looks at the labels and talks to us about those things. So education works. Um, and then I just wanna say there's a lot of bad things in the world, and there's a lot of things that uh, contribute to poor health. God forbid we could ban steak because red meat leads to heart disease. Um, I like that quote Rich said, you know, but every once in a while it's A-OK. -okay. And then I just want to make one final comment. There's a lot of people who um, sent emails attacking Osh, and he and I had a discussion about this yesterday. Osh isn't a bad guy. We get along well. He might, he might be misguided from my perspective sometimes, and I might be misguided from his perspective sometimes but we can laugh about it and talk about it, and it's not about that. So the people who've been sending those uh, pretty crude emails, you shouldn't be doing that because this is about the policy. We disagree, and that's okay. I think this is a colossal waste of time. He doesn't. He thinks we should restrict the choices. I think we should increase them, and that's okay. I just think this is the wrong path for us, and I think it's the wrong steps for us to take as a city. So I apologize for those emails. I may have told them to email you. I didn't tell them what to email you. And, and I, think, I, think <laughs> Osh, I think Osh knows that. So, um, you know, I personally um, don't think this should go to the priority setting session. Um, I'll let one of my colleagues make the motion if they want it to go there, but I would rather see this stop here. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Liberty. Uh, uh, City Attorney, I assume the option is also no, no motion at all, correct? Councilor Calrow. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank everyone for being here. There's over 400 and many of those that oppose my suggestion and offer uh, knowledge on the fact that education is important. And I do want to make reference to the emails. I've received many emails, responded to as many as I can. I got to tell you, even those that were opposed were very respectful after I emailed them. Uh, if they may have been a little angry at first when they understand what I was trying to do, even after the fact, they may or may not have changed their mind, but they were very respectful and understand what my goal was. And uh, so I really appreciate uh, the outpouring 
of interest in this issue, although I do agree with Mr. McCoy, there are plenty of other issues that are way more important that should get the headlines that this has gotten. I think that's unfortunate, frankly, uh, because there are plenty of other uh, pressing issues. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, and just to reiterate um, that, you know, the, w whether this goes forward or not, I, I'm glad that at least this issue has been brought up. If it's going to be brought up at all, I'm glad it did get brought up and that people do think about the choices they make because um, we can't just stick our head in the sands and pretend that not just the choices we're making, but the billions of, of dollars of marketing and, and, and the way that our youth uh, are being, um, uh, you know, dis targeted. Uh, it, it's not, and, and it's not exclusive to one industry or the other, but we certainly saw it definitely with the tobacco industry, and we know that sugar-sweetened beverages are one major contributor, particularly for youth. Although many of us limit the amount we drink as we get older, the younger people tend to drink more of it than others. And so we should continue this discussion regardless of what happens today. Again, as I said, the county, the, 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 the schools as referenced, you know, the schools put this policy in four years ago to limit what the children have on school campuses. We limit a lot of things. We don't limit a lot of things. So I think it is under the proper purview of the government and the city to decide what it is going to provide. And that's what the subject here is. The ordinance is the purchase, use, distribution, and sale by the city, not by private citizens, not by uh, private events and what have you, just by the city. Again, just want to make that very clear. And I think the city does play a role in the public health of our community. Uh, this is an item that I do not want to spend staff resources or council resources trying to solve what is obviously a complicated and difficult problem. Uh, to have no measurable impact on the obesity problem. So I, I don't support spending the effort on this to sort this out. As interesting as it may be, uh, I certainly would not support putting it in my top 10 list or the council's top 10 list. Uh, but we do have a process to uh, let the council make those decisions. It's called our priority setting. It's currently scheduled for the 10th of September, I believe, is when we're uh, going to do it. There are lots of competing ordinances and lots of competing things that I personally think are much more likely to have a measurable impact on important issues than this. Uh, but I do think it should go to that priority setting session let the council uh, make that decision as council members have to decide what they think is most important. But we have no motion. So uh, the rules committee takes no action on this item. We're not placing it on the uh, September 10th. Uh, Priority setting agenda, we're taking no action. So we'll move on to the OAC appointments. <coughs> that is the uh, newly named, newly formed operational area committee that probably should have a different name that actually explains it's about emergency operations, but we'll let the people who are going to serve on that. I've recommended Councilmember Oliverio and Councilmember Rocha serve on that. Motion approved. Second. Motion is to approve. Put them to work. Put them to work. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Un unopposed? And I did check with him first. <laughs> Didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get another committee. Uh, there's actually another committee that's being disbanded. Uh, not sure what it's called. It's got another one of those funny names. It's, on it. it's the regional, uh, regional prepar emergency preparedness council. Or something. It's an emergency preparedness council, something or other, something or other. It's being reorganized. Uh, that is the last item until the open forum. Nothing under the open forum, so we are done. We're adjourned. I have three free drinks if anyone wants them. I bought them with personal funds. Personal funds. So come on, get them.